Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. Okay, uh... Let's see... So sorry, everyone. I'm having technical difficulties here. Um... So hopefully I have people joining. Um, I'm just going to give it a few minutes here as people, um, as people come over from the other, the other um, scheduled one I have. So let me give it a few minutes so I can get people, um, you know, from over there to my channel. I'm so sorry. This is the first time I've done this and it's a little bit um, of a learning curve, I will say. So I've had to do a lot of reading <clears throat> you know reading and and trying to figure out exactly how to do the um the live stream live streaming thing um but uh apparently i didn't <laughs> i didn't read enough because the the one i had scheduled the link originally um is is apparently not working um so let me go over there and just make sure um Okay, sorry. Oh, okay, just want to make sure people are there. Okay, I'm going to read through some of these notes here. Okay, <laughs> sorry. All right, good. I'm glad to see so many people here. So exciting. Okay, all right. I think I have people coming over here. I'll, I might jump back there. Um, good. All right. So I think I can see folks. I see people here commenting. Um, uh, I'm, I'm hoping everybody can hear me. Can, um, can everybody hear me okay? Uh, I will tell you also that um, the, uh, the live streaming itself has a little bit of a delay. So it's somewhere around like 15 or 20 seconds. Um, good. I hear I hear people saying they can hear me. Perfect. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm so excited it's working now. Okay. Um, so there's a little bit of a delay. There's like a 15 to 30 second delay between like me speaking and you hearing it on your computers. So it's a little bit weird. I understand that's fairly normal for the YouTube live streaming. Uh, so we'll just have to sort of deal with it and see how it goes. So Welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for joining me in this uh, first live streaming soap session. Um, I think it should last about an hour. I got a little bit of a late start, um, but uh, I think we'll be fine. Um, so uh, if you have, you know, soapy questions, feel free to shout them out. I can see you in the chat. Um, and uh, uh, I'll try to answer those questions. I'll tell you a little bit about what uh, is going to happen today during the session. Um, I thought I'd spend a little bit of time just chatting and answering questions if you guys have some. Um, I have a code for um, Mad Oils for free shipping I'm going to give you guys. I also have a little bit of a giveaway we're going to do. And then I'm also going to do a live soap making session. So just to tell you a little bit about kind of how this came about, um, I had been considering doing a live soaping session. And as I was thinking about it and I was kind of thinking about, um, you know, what the soap would be and what it would look like, I started to put this design together in my head and I was going to use a bunch of mad oil products. So I actually reached out to Mad Oils, to Joanna at Mad Oils, and asked her if she'd like to, you know, sort of partner with me, and I would do sort of a Mad Oils themed live soaping session. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Mad Oils is fantastic, and they were so nice to partner with me. They have given me um, some giveaway stuff, so I'm going to be giving those, and they provided the free shipping code. Um, so let me... Um, let me make sure I get the free shipping code here. So I'm just going to pull this up here. Okay, I'm going to put it in the chat here.
Okay, so that's the uh, free shipping code. Um, and it's up to $9.99, and it's good for the remainder of the month. So if you'd like to order something, you can get free shipping from Mad Oils. And um, okay, Erica, okay, Erica, I see your question. Erica Burnetic, uh, can you please confirm I'm watching this live and I'm not late to watch you? You are absolutely watching this live. Um, there's a little bit of a delay probably, again, from me transmitting here to you actually hearing me. It's probably about uh, 15 to, to 30 seconds somewhere in there. But yes, this is a live session happening right now. So, um, okay, so that's the, um, that's the free code, the free shipping code for uh, Mad Oils. Feel free to use that. And let me talk about, uh, let me talk about what we're going to give away here. I gotta make some room on my soapy table. And we'll take a quick peek at giveaway stuff. I tried to be super organized here, but we'll see how this goes. Okay, so hopefully, where am I at? Okay, so hopefully you can see kind of everything there. Get this camera a little bit down. Okay, so this is going to be the giveaway which we'll do after the soapy session today. Mad Oils has provided um, these things that are called um, batter bottles. Um, so if you're, you know, kind of into doing fancy show soaps and, and need squeeze bottles for them, um, they're really big and squishy. They have a really kind of big opening, um, so they'll be great for soap batter, and they'll be easy to clean, I think, also, because they have nice wide openings for them. So there's three of those um, that Mad Oils has uh, donated for this session. And then from my stash, I have a bunch of Mad Oil micas. And so I took some of those and I have um, a little sample of all the colors that I have. So there's 12 colors um, and this is Flirt, which is uh, the one we'll be using today. Then this is Voodoo, which is one of my favorite pinks, uh, Pink Chiffon. This is Sister Golden Hair Surprise probably one of my favorite gold micas I've ever used. Uh, this is called Pot of Gold, which is kind of a, um, a, a nice light um, and airy kind of yellow with a little shimmer. Um, then over here, there's a Galactic Moss, which is kind of a nice uh, dark green with lots of gold in it. This is Maniacal Pea, probably my favorite name for a mica, um, a mica ever. Um, then there is, let's see, this is Tahitian Teal, which is kind of like a, like an, almost like a Tiffany blue kind of color. We'll be using that today as well. Um, Key West Blue, probably my favorite blue of all times. It's such a beautiful, deep blue. We'll be using that color today. Peacock Blue, uh, this is called Harold's Purple Crayon. Um, which we'll be using in the soap today as well. And then finally, Gray Satin Pillow, which is a really lovely um, kind of dove gray kind of color. Um, I also have just a set of um, handmade thank you cards that I have made um, that I'm gonna include in the, uh, the giveaway, the prize as well. So that's, that's what's going to be in our giveaway a little bit later on. I'm just gonna move my stuff here. And it's a, it's a little bit of a, a crazy um, setup because uh, I have my laptop in my normal soaping area and I've got lights set up so that you can see me and I've got this other camera hooked up to my, uh, to my laptop. So it's a little bit of a different setup for me for my soaping. Um, okay, uh, let's see. So let's, I don't see any question soapy questions um but i do see you all chatting which is great so i can see you guys okay 
Um, so I think we'll get started with kind of making the soap since I got a little bit started later. But if you have questions, feel free to shout them out and um, I'll try to answer them. Um, I'm going to make just a little bit of adjustment here as I make some more room. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's talk about the soap that um, I'm going to make today. So I want to make kind of a jewel tone uh, themed soap. So really, you know, some deep blues, um, sort of like sapphire. I have some purple for some kind of like an amethyst. Um, uh, we have a uh, flirt, which is more along the ruby kind of spectrum. And then I'm using Tahitian teal, which is more of a Tiffany blue, so kind of a light, bright blue, um, to add a little bit of contrast. Let me push that down so you're not staring at my kitchen light. Um, and then I'm going to use some gold uh, mica as kind of a pencil line. And uh, what I'd like to do is kind of not flat layers with a pencil line and then another flat layer to pencil line, but I want to do kind of jaggedy kind of layers. So I'm going to try and thicken up the soap a little bit. Um, let me get my goggles and my gloves ready. And let's switch over to take a look at... the prep here. Okay. Okay. Let's go over the the ingredients we'll be using today. Um, let's see, I got a couple questions here. Um, will you list the mica list for us if we need to order? Yes, um, I will put the list in the comments after this video is posted. It'll appear in my video list just like any of my other videos. And if you go to it in the description, I will have um, the recipe for the soap that we're doing today. I'll have everything listed there. And um, uh, you'll have the names of all of the micas that will be listed there. And they're all from Mad Oils today. So, okay. Um, let's see, Janice, and that was from D. Hicks. Janice Evans asked, does rubbing alcohol prevent soda ash? You know, this is a good question. Um, I will tell you, I have a feeling soda ash is sort of environmentally um, uh, factored. I almost never, ever get soda ash here in Philadelphia. And we get pretty humid here, but... Um, I do keep my house fairly cool, um, and so like in the summer I have the air conditioner on, but I very, very rarely get soda ash. Now, I have heard plenty of people say that they will spray the top to try and prevent soda ash. Um, I, I don't know of any um, definitive answer for you. It is certainly um, um, sort of one of, I don't want to call it an old wives' tale, but it is certainly sort of an accepted practice to, um, to uh, spray alcohol to try to prevent soda ash. Lots of people do it, um, and they seem to think that it does. I don't know definitively or not, but, but certainly lots of people do that. Um, so that was Janice Evans. So Babs Zola asks, I would like to make milk soap. No, I would like to make soap with milk. Is powder a good way to go? I have used goat milk powder a lot, and I love it. It's very easy to use. I actually don't even um, mix it with water. I just put the powder right in the soap batter itself, just, you know, a tablespoon or two, and it works out fantastic for me. I think it adds a very, like, creamy quality to your soap lather once it's all finished. So I love using goat milk powder. Um, I like using goat milk, the liquid form as well, but I think goat milk powder is a, is a fine alternative. What's your fa and Debbie Poor asks, what's your favorite steric ratio in a shaving soap? Okay, um, 
So, so my favorite rest, my favorite proportion is, let me see if I can, uh, hold on one second, I'm losing questions. Sorry, I'm trying to get, get my screen here. Um, my favorite proportion is 60% potassium hydroxide to 40%, um, um, uh, sodium hydroxide. Uh, I find that it still gives a very hard puck, um, you know, for my shaving soap, uh, but still um, you get the benefits, I think, of both of the hydroxides. So, um, okay, I think that was all my questions. How do you prevent those little, this is from Debbie also, how do you prevent those little white dots in your soap when using titanium dioxide? Um, I would say the best way to do it is to make sure that your titanium dioxide is really well dispersed before you add it to your soap batter. So um, if you have, now there's different kinds of titanium dioxide out there, some that are water soluble, some that are oil soluble, some that can use in both. Um, I personally use Brambleberry's titanium dioxide and I've very rarely had a problem with it. Um, but do make sure that you mix it well. I keep mine pre-mixed in a little squeeze bottle. And, um, you know, one of the things I actually picked up from um, Birdie Jean, who is another YouTube soap maker, she pre-mixes her things also. And she put a little, I forget what it was, like a toy car or something in her, in her, um, in her bottle so that when she shakes it up, the titanium dioxide gets mixed up really well. That was a really good tip actually. So I have something in my mixing um, squeeze bottle now too, because the titanium dioxide, if, if you don't use it, will settle to the bottom and get really thick. So um, I say, make sure you mix it up really quick, really well. And if you're really having a problem, mix it up separately, put it in a little container, um, like we have down here, like I have set up down here, put it in a little container and uh, try using one of these uh, little mini mixers. Um, this is really what I use, and it works really well to make sure I get a good mix um, with my micas. So, um, okay, why do you do cold process when you have to use so much essential oil? So that's from Teal All's House. Um, I'm not really sure I understand the question, um, you shouldn't really have to use any different amount of essential oils in cold process or hot process. Um, you know, each one of those has uh, a safe range of percentage that you can use with an essential oil or a fragrance oil. And the method which you make the soap shouldn't really matter. Uh, Brimbleberries. Okay, great. Perfect. Okay, let's, let's go over. I'll, I'll continue to look and see if there are questions, but... Um, I'll, uh, let's start going over the recipe here today. Okay, so again, it's going to be kind of a jewel tone um, themed soap with some gold mica. And so I'm using Sister Golden Hair Surprise as my gold. Now I'm not gonna color any of my cold, um, uh, my, gold, my soap gold. This is gonna be an accent on top. Um, and I'm also gonna use um, the mica directly with, with this sort of tea strainer that I'm gonna do to um, add the pencil line. Tahitian teal, which is that lovely light blue color, Key West blue, Harold's purple crayon, and this is called Flirt. So these are all mad oil micas. The other thing I'm going to be adding here is two tablespoons of sodium lactate and uh, two tablespoons of aloe vera liquid. Those happen to be both from Brambleberry. Um, on top of my soap, I'm gonna use a little bit of decoration. Uh, this is uh, some blue corn flowers, and these are jasmine flowers. These are both from um, Mad Oils. The fragrance I'm going to be using today is um, Mad Oils Elder Flower. Now, Elder Flower is one of their new fragrances, and I have such a hard time describing fragrances. Um, it's floral, it's springy, it's fresh, it's a little feminine, it's soft, it's a lovely fragrance. Um, so 
this is one of their newer fragrances and that's what we'll be using to um, so I'm using uh, 80 grams of that uh, for the fragrance itself the mold that I will be using is the tall and skinny mold this is from American soap supplies and I think that's it for stuff for uh, what we're using let me go over the recipe for the soap itself. Okay, so, so in my oils, I have 480 grams of olive oil pomace, 300 grams of coconut oil, 76 degree, 240 grams of cocoa butter, 120 grams of rice bran oil, 60 grams of castor oil and then for my lye and water I have 456 grams of water and 167 grams of lye that is a 26.85 percent lye solution it's um, soap calc's default value uh, so that's what we'll be using there okay now my plan is um, I'm going to uh, d divide my, my soap up into the four colors, and the first one I'm going to kind of mix to try and get a little bit thick. Um, and then I'll put that into the mold, add the, the mica line, and then do the next color, again making it a little bit thick. Okay, let me check up on questions here. Um, from Teal Hot Process, you can use about half as much essential oil. I don't hot process. I've done hot process like twice. Um, so if you can use less essential oil, that's, that's great. I guess I, I really, I really don't do that. Um, okay. What is it? Oh, good description. Okay. Do you ever use, this is from Sarah Shoemaker. Um, do you ever use the aloe in place of the water? Um, you can. I have never replaced all of my water with aloe. I like adding it just a couple of teaspoons. Um, and I'm fairly, I will say I'm fairly new to using aloe. I've only used it for the past couple of months. Um, I like, um, I like the quality again that I think it adds to the final soap. I think it gives it kind of a silky kind of feel. Um, but I have never done a soap where I have used only aloe liquid or some people use aloe juice that you can get from, um, I, I, hear, I hear you can get it in pharmacies and at Walmart and things like that, but I've never made a soap with just the aloe. Um, what made you decide, oh, Janet, hi Janet. <laughs> um, what made you decide to make soap or what got you interested in soap making? Oh, well, so funny. Um, I, you know, I, I guess I knew that you could make soap somewhere in the back of my head. Um, but um, have you ever had one of those days when you're, you're not really doing anything and you're kind of on the computer and you're looking at Facebook and you're kind of just, you know, messing around? Well, um, I was doing that one day and I ended up on YouTube and I don't even know how I got there, but I ended up on this, um, video of this woman making soap and it was like um, I think the video is still out there but it was she was she was um, I think she was Mennonite or maybe Amish and she was making soap outside and like the whole process just sort of fascinated me and from that moment on I was sort of obsessed with it for probably a couple of months and I read everything I could about making soap and watched a million videos. And um, I think ultimately I was kind of looking for a little bit of a creative outlet in my life. Um, and, uh, you know, soap making seemed to be um, that, that creative outlet. And I really like the combination of um, creativity and artistry and the science part of it. And I think that's also, I'm a nurse for those of you who don't know, but um, I, I think that's what attracted me to nursing as well. You know, there's certainly um, not necessarily, I guess, a creative aspect, but sort of a caring aspect to nursing. And then there's sort of a very science, um, you know, hardcore academic, academic side to nursing. 
So I like the combination of those two things, and the thing, and the same thing was with um, soap. I've always liked to teach, and and having a YouTube channel has let me um, sort of explore that teaching side of things as well. Can you use aloe, milk powder, salt, and silk all in the same recipe? That's from Babs Zola. Sure, you could use aloe, milk powder, salt, and sure, absolutely, you could use all those. I wouldn't see why not. Um, do you think you would consider making a cold process soap with aloe? I might try that in the future. It might be a good video to do. Yeah. I've used aloe. Okay, good. Oh, Barbara. Um, Barbara, I'm going to get your, wrong, your name wrong. Um, ask you. She said she saw the same video I did. Um, I, I know it's still out there, but yeah, it uh, just got me hooked. Okay. Uh, okay, good. All right, so let me get started here. Okay, um, I gotta grab my gold mica first. Um, I've talked about this before, and I was a little unprepared with that, but so I like um, in, in culinary or in food, there is a concept called um, mise en place, or in the theater, there is a concept called mise en scene, um, French terms, and really what they just mean is um, get everything ready, right? Put everything in its proper place. And so I like to do that. That's how I like to prep for my soap making. Um, I like to measure everything out. I like to have a good plan for what my design is going to be, um, have everything measured, have everything ready to go. And then because, um, <laughs> Things change, right, especially in soap making. You can go in with this great plan and then you have to react to it. So I feel like if I have everything set up um, at, and ready to go, I'm as prepared as I can be. Then when things go wrong, I can react really well to them. So, and Sarah Schumacher asked the gold micers for Mad Oils as well. Yes, it is called um, Sister Golden Hair Surprise and um, probably my favorite gold mica. Okay, so... Let me get ready here. Okay, so I have some containers. Uh, these I like these little plastic beakers. Um, so I'm going to be dividing them up there. Make sure I can get my oils ready to go here. And I'm going to take a little bit of the gold mica. I'm going to be off screen just a little bit here. As I get ready. Okay, let's uh, let's check temperatures. All right, so my oils are right around 90 and my lye is right around 70. And let me get my stick blender ready to go. And sorry if you hear a dog in the background. That's, it's a beautiful day here in Philadelphia. It's one of my neighbors has their dog barking. Okay. Um, okay, great. All right, so I'm going to add my, um, this is my um, aloe vera liquid. So I'm just gonna add that and my sodium lactate. And I'm gonna add my lye water. Now I'm going to mix this up, but I'm not really looking for trace. I'm really just getting um, going for emulsification at this point. Okay, good. Um, I'm going to add in my fragrance, which I have pre-measured. 
This is um, eight, 80 grams of the elderflower. Mm, that smells so nice. It's very springy. All right, give that a little mix. Now, I have never used this fragrance before. Um, I talked to uh, Joanne and Kathy at Mad Oils. Um, and they have it posted on their site also, but um, this is not supposed to accelerate. But even if it does, I'm not super concerned about it. I think we're right at light trace right now, if you can see that. Because um, I do want sort of a thicker uh, soap batter when I do my design. Okay. Now, you'll notice I have butcher paper down today. I normally have a vinyl covering, but because of all the lighting, I didn't want the reflecting, so I put some butcher paper down here, which I'm sure is going to be um, a mess by the time I'm done. But All right, so I'm just going to divide these up evenly. Okay, and I'll try to look at questions here in a second, but uh, give me give me just a second here. Okay. Um, sorry, let me look here. Trying to read questions and um, I missed I missed a couple here. Um, you can also get it probably stick from okay. What is the um, I'm using aloe vera liquid. Um, it is from Brambleberry. Um, yes. Yes, there is a difference between the uh, liquid and the extract. Again, I've never used the, the extract that you get in the store, but I, it's very thick, I think, or th thicker than the liquid itself. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I see a couple people more joining. Um, okay. All right. So we've got these uh, divided up. Let me even these out here just a little bit. And I'm just eyeballing these. These don't have to be perfect. Okay. All right. Let me get these in in the shot. I I feel like in addition to soaping, I'm I have to like juggle where everything. I can't even figure out where it is on the screen. That's terrible. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. All right. All right. Let's get some colors going here. So uh, this is Tahitian teal, Key West blue, Harold's purple crayon, and this is called Flirt. All right. We're going to mix those. And I'm going to go from uh, lightest to darkest. If you don't reach emulsification and put it in the mold and it doesn't set up, 
can you rebatch it if the recipe is correct and just under blended? That was from Pretty Hands On. And yes, in general, I think you could. Um, if, if it didn't set up, it would have, I don't know, it, I feel like it would have to be really unblended. Um, but yes, if, that, if that's the question and it is a good recipe and it just didn't get blended well, you, you could rebatch it. I myself am not a huge fan of rebatching. I, <laughs> I just don't make enough soap, but I can see people who made a lot of soap uh, rebatching would be a good thing for them. I just don't make enough, and I find that the effort to rebatch is just not worth it. Okay. All right, I'm going to rinse off my stick blender real quick here. Okay. All right. So, I'm so I'm going to push these just a little bit aside here. We're going to use the um, these colors in a second. Let's see if I can get cleaned up here a little bit. Okay. Now, I want this to be a little bit thicker, so I'm going to blend the teal here just a little bit more. Okay. All right, that was a lot of stick blending, but I want it to be thicker uh, for the design I'm doing. Okay, so um, I'm going to... I think I'm just going to plop this in here. Uh, you know what? The teal I want sort of here and there. So let's do... Let's do the blue also. Uh, Bab said the containers look like they're from the Master Batch video. Yes, that's true. Um, I'm still using those. I like them. The, the square one is a little bit small. I wish I had a tiny bit more room with it. But um, but they save so much space. Like they, I got them because they're the perfect size for the batches I make. So I just don't have a lot of extra space in it. Um, the containers, Erica, uh, I will have to look. I don't know. I can't remember the name of the company off the top of my head. It's a like it's a container company. It's not a soap company. Um, but if you watch my master batch video, um, I list in there the exact containers I use and the companies in there as well. But I can't recall the name of it. Okay, so this is Key West Blue, and I'm, I'm putting it all in here. Um, this fragrance oil is behaving very well. Okay, now let's see if I can move this out of the way here so I can get this a little bit better. Okay, all right, now I want to give this 
um, a little bit of texture. I don't want it to be flat. Now it's actually still a little bit thin to do this. I'm just, I kind of want to give it little different peaks. Okay, I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to be imperfect um, in terms of the, the layers themselves. All right, so now I'm gonna use the uh, Sister Golden Hair Surprise Mica. And I want a nice gold I want a nice, very thin, even coating of the mica. I want to be able to see it, but I don't want it to prevent my layers from sticking together. So it's like a balance, right? You want enough to be able to see it, but not so much that it, it prevents your soap from sticking together. Okay, all right, now I want some of the teal, but I'm, I'm only gonna kind of put, put it in kind of randomly. This is a good, this is a good um, design if you get a thick, a thick soap. Okay. I'm going to cover those with some of my gold mica. Um, Sarah said, how do you know what's too much? <laughs> that is an excellent question. I don't, there's no, I don't think I can give you like a good definitive answer. Um, trial and error. You just sort of have to wing it a little bit. That's probably not a great answer, but sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, would spraying it with alcohol help the adhesion of mycoline? Um, I don't know, but the alcohol would definitely, um, you know, turn the mica more liquid and then it would kind of run. And I definitely don't want that to happen. So, okay. Let's do purple next, or a flirt, I'm sorry, flirt. Uh, Christy said, what time did we start? I started right at four o'clock uh, Eastern time. So we've been going for about 50 minutes now. Okay. All right, so I'm going to add the flirt. Okay. All right, so this, um, this won't take a whole lot longer. And then as soon as I'm done uh, with the soap, we'll do the, the giveaway. Okay, that's flirt. And again, I'm gonna try and make the surface sort of imperfect here. I don't want it to be level. So just making some peaks and valleys. OK. 
Okay. Going back to my gold mica. Um, am I using mad oil micas? Yes. Um, I kind of went over them earlier on, but uh, this one is called Flirt. Um, I'm using Key West Blue and Tahitian Teal and Harold's Purple Crayon in this soap that we're working on right now. Um, and then in the giveaway, I have a whole bunch of samples of mad oil um, micas that um, I'll be giving away. Okay, so that's the flirt. Um, and the scent was elderflower. That's also from Mad Oils. Again, just sort of randomly adding some of this Tahitian teal in here. And more gold mica. And I'm sorry if I'm missing some of your questions. I'm, um, you know, trying to watch questions and make the soap. So I apologize uh, if I'm missing some of your questions. Okay. Uh, finally is the purple. And I'm not going to mix this because I think it's uh, thickened up enough here. Tell us about how much mica you mixed in. Uh, oh, okay. So I, you know, people ask this a lot and I don't have a great answer because I, it's not precise. Um, I mix in um, probably about a, a, a rounded tablespoon to um, two tablespoons of mica and then enough oil just to make it a nice fluid, um, a nice fluid consistency. Uh, so I know that's not a precise answer, but it's probably the best one I can give you. Um, I just sort of, you want a consistency in your mica that has been mixed in the oil so that it easily pours into your soap batter and will disperse well. Uh, so it can't be thick and clumpy. Um, I don't want it so runny that, um, that it adds a ton of extra oil um, you know, to, to my recipe. So it's sort of a, a consistency thing that I'm looking for. Okay, I'm gonna give this a good tap. Because it is kind of thick, I want to make sure I'm getting out air bubbles. Okay, and then for the top, I'm going to add just some of the teal here. I'm going to have a little teal left over. Not a lot. Okay, and then I want to do a textured top. Kevin needs an assistant. <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, it's Emily Shay. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for showing up. Emily um, Shay, I have to tell you, somebody asked earlier how I got into soaping, and um, I watched a video, which sort of got me incredibly interested in it, but one of the very first blogs I ever sort of read and got hooked on was Emily Shay's uh, Soap and Restless. So if you are not familiar with her blog, please check it out. Um, she has amazing designs. Uh, I, I think I told her very early on years ago that when I grow up, um, when, I, when I'm a grown up soaper, I wanna, I wanna be just like her. Um, so go check out her blog. Okay, so I'm making kind of just a, a textured top here. 
Again, very imperfect. All right, I'm gonna add some of my gold mica in oil. Sorry, I had to get my little pipette here. Um, okay, I'm gonna drop just a little bit of, so no mica, no just dust mica on top, but this is mica in oil, just on the top here. And just going for a little bit of gold shimmer. And then I'm gonna take my spoon and kind of texture the top here. I'm trying to push it up to the middle a little bit to give it just a tiny kind of peak. Not huge, but just a little peak here in the middle because I'm gonna add some of these um, botanical elements here in a second. Okay. All right. I <laughs> somebody's okay. So people are offering to be my assistant. I love it. All right, these are jasmine flowers. So just adding a few of these. These are very pretty. There, I've never seen jasmine flowers before. Um, Mad oils. Um, this was when I had my recent order from Mad Oils. This was one of the free samples they sent me. Um, I think they're pretty. They're just like these little white buds. Okay. And I'm going to just push them down a little bit so they stick in the soap. Not a lot, but I want them to have good contact there. Okay, and then last, um, is some blue corn flowers. And again, I'm gonna tap them down just a little bit, just so they stick in the soap. Okay, I think that's it. Um, have I used jasmine flowers before? No, I have not. Um, and Cynthia's asking if they turn brown. Um, I don't know, is anybody um, in the chat room? Uh, Listening, has anybody used them before? I have not. This is the first time um, ever that I have used them. Um, I know a lot of things do turn brown, you know, like lavender buds and whatnot, but um, I don't know about the jasmine flowers. These are just sort of sitting on top, so I'm hoping they won't turn brown, but um, let me just clean this up really quickly here. Okay, well, that is the soap, folks. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll get you a close up here of the top in one second. Okay, let's see if I can get a little close up here. Okay. All right. So my soap is going to go in the fridge um, because I like to try and prevent uh, partial gel. So I usually refrigerate mine. Uh, remember, I don't make a ton of soap. You know, I only make kind of one batch at a time. So um, usually not an issue for me. Um, again, if you ask some questions and I miss them, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just trying to make the soap happen here. And it's so funny, I don't know how to scroll up on the chat to see, um, to see the old messages. So, um, 
Will you upload this YouTube? Yes. Once this video is done, it'll be, a, it'll be just like any other video once I'm all finished here. Um, so you, you'll be able to come back and see it from the very beginning. Um, thank you, a beautiful, thank you so much, Mary. That's very nice of you. Um, who's, who, oh, who did I say I wanted to be like? Emily Shea from Shea Design Studio, who is in the house here as well. So um, go check out her blog, Soap and Restless. Uh, she is beautiful soap. Post the final cut. Yes, I'll do a separate video on the final cut. Um, uh, that'll be a separate video from this after it's all finished. Um, will I be doing this again? So um, that's a good question. What do you guys think? Did you enjoy it? Did you have fun? Would it be something you'd want to come back to again? Um, I'm interested to hear what people have to say about sort of attending it. Uh, looks like I have about 80 people who are attending, um, which is a great turnout, quite honestly. Um, I, I, you know, when you do things like this, I, I go back to like that old high school person and you're like, oh my God, nobody's going to show up for my little party. <laughs> but um, so 80 people is fantastic. I'm so glad you guys all came and watched. That's uh, great. Thank you so much for coming. Um, it looks like you all enjoyed it. So yeah, I probably will do something like this again. Um, maybe, you know, a little time to sort of uh, go between this one and the next one. But uh, yeah, I will probably do another live event um, and schedule, and hopefully I'll get a little bit more practice. I'm a little, I feel like I'm a mess right now. My whole, um, uh, my whole uh, desk here is a mess, which I am normally not um, a mess. Uh, I, for those of you who watch me know I'm sort of a neat soaper, I try to be, but. Um, okay, so let's do the giveaway, because I'm a little bit over. I wanted this to try to be around an hour, and if you have to leave, I want to get you out of here, but um, okay. So here's how we're going to do the giveaway. Um, I am going to take my little post-it pad here and I'm going to write a number on it. Um, and, and then I'm going to tell you um, uh, to, to guess a number between, you know, X and Y, all right? Um, and then I want you to type in the chat a number and then the first person who types in the number that I have written and matches it is going to be the winner of the giveaway. Okay, does everybody get that? Okay, so I'm gonna write down a number. Wait, wait, no peeking. Okay, all right, so I wrote down a number. So in the chat, I would like you to guess a number between one and 50. Go, okay? The first person I see in chat who writes down the number on my paper here is going to be the winner, okay? And you can, I don't really care if you, <laughs> you can guess multiple times. Oh wait, there it is. Okay. Oh my goodness, it was it was it went by. Wait, wait, it was twenty three. It was twenty three. Who just guessed twenty three? It was up there earlier. It was uh, mall. It was the purple one. Stop guessing. <laughs> it was. I saw who it was, but you went by so quickly. Twenty three. Um, how do I go up in chats? Wait, I gotta see it. Oh wait, here I can do it. Okay, I got it. So, okay, Maui Heat, Maui Heat. That's the first person I saw. Um, let me make sure, here's Maui Heat, 23. Um, I'm gonna go and look at the other ones because they like flew by. Just wanna make sure I didn't miss anybody. Oh no, here it is, I'm sorry, uh, way earlier. I'm sorry, Maui Heat, way earlier I see here Cherie Love guessed 23. Looks like she was the first one. Hold on, let me go back to the front. I want to make sure I, yes, okay. So, um, where did that go? Cherie Love 24, you were the first person to guess 23. Um, so you are the winner of the giveaway, okay? 
Um, so please make sure you message me or I will message you, um, but uh, I will make sure to get a hold of you so that I can get your snail mail address um, so I can mail out your giveaway, okay? Um, all right, so thanks everyone for attending. I really appreciate you guys showing up. Remember, Mad Oils, free shipping. If you go there, the code is mad for divine and I'm gonna type that in the chat right here, um, if I can, mad for divine. That is the code that if you go to Mad Oils and you order something, you can get free shipping up to $9.99 for the rest of this month. Um, and uh, you'll get free shipping. So thanks very much. And thanks to Mad Oils for uh, donating the prize, some of the prizes and for the coupon code for free shipping. I really appreciate you guys. If you're not um, familiar with Mad Oils, check them out. Fantastic products. I love their micas. Great fragrances. Probably one of the most unusual and interesting fragrances I know of is Thai Sticky Rice. So unusual, just wonderful. I love that fragrance, but um, okay. Um, so that's it, everybody. Thanks so much for coming and watching. Um, I hope you all have a fantastic Sunday afternoon and um, look uh, in my channel for the cutting video, which I will probably be up in a day or two to see the cut of this soap, okay? All right, thanks everyone. Um, have a great day.